Hey everybody, welcome to Lake Erie Chestnuts. I'm John. This is the late July 2022. Today I thought I would talk a little bit about orchard organization and how you can identify trees uh, more quickly. We initially set up the orchard in lengthy rows. We wanted to avoid bottoms, so we wanted ridge tops and hillsides to avoid that low hanging fog where you can get frost damage late in the, in the spring. Uh, so that's what we did. We elected to use an ABC uh, system for the rows and then just gave each tree a number, one, two, three, four, five. And our initial orchard uh, distance apart from each other, we chose to put our trees 30 foot, 30 foot distance. You can see that. 30 foot distance between each tree tube here and 30 foot apart. So this is row A and then 30 foot foot is 30 is B, C, D, and so forth. And then we just used a tape measure. And so when you go over a hill, that means some here rows get a little staggered. Some of you have a a GPS way to do it in much more organized fashion. Uh, you know, I didn't have access to those tools and I was just ready to put trees in the ground, but I can rapidly tell most trees whether I planted them or not. Uh, one is the first three rows have 30 trees in them and the fourth row, D, has 10 trees. Those first 100 trees were planted from one year bare root seedlings from uh, purchased from Route 9 Cooperative in in Carrollton, Ohio from Greg Miller. They were great trees. I got about seven or eight different varieties. Uh, you know, not not grafted. These were all seedlings. I always emphasize that. Uh, but they were Payne, Patterson, uh, Ching, uh, Yixian, large, uh, those sorts of things. And I planted those. Now, some of those did not take. Most of them did well, but like I've said, you can you can have mortality for the first two or three years through deer, through blight, through just don't like where they planted, the tree was problematic, whatever. Uh, didn't survive the bare root process. Uh, but then after the 10th tree in row D, I know that I grew that tree from seed. So this is B. We got C here in front of us, and then we got D here. I know that any tree in a row farther down from that tree right there is planted from seed by me. And I know that after the 10th tree here, going this way, I planted that tree from seed. So the older part of the orchard, this I planted seed started trees the same year I planted these one year bare roots. So the one year bare roots had a year on them. And of course they look better. They have one year of growth on these others. Uh, but here's D. So here's a tree, it's got burrs on it. And I've done an identification system. The problem is, is when I put the tag on, I used the wrong type of metal. So as the trees flex against the, the wind and the tie, they eventually fell off. I used this kind of, I thought it would be non-corrosive, but it was a, an aluminum. And you can see here, the aluminum stamp plate was great. But this wire was not. But I can tell quickly by looking at this one. This is row D2. It's from Ching Parents. And it was planted in 15. So that's my quick identification system here. Unfortunately, some of those have fallen off over time. So I have to dig them out of the dirt. When and if I ever get the energy to do that. But very helpful to identify tree quickly. But... We're in row E now, so this is a tree I grew from seed. You can see this tree here. This tree 
is E1. CR is Chestnut Ridge of Pike County. So that's going to be from Dunstan Parents. And I planted it in 15. So if you see that tree there, that was a one-year-old bare root planted in 15. This is a tree planted from seed started indoors in 15. Now, some of the trees look way better. You can see a tree right here next to it that's got oh, five foot of growth over the other one. But they kind of go through a stepwise progression. They get up, they throw a few laterals, and then they throw a whole bunch of laterals. So you can kind of see that progression. You see these trees here? Now those look nice. Those look decent. But when you look at the next step, that tree has one more year of growth because it was a bare root tree. So you can see kind of, if you look at this tree right here, it's got a big long vertical. It's got a whole bunch of laterals and it's gonna have more burrs. If you move over the camera and look at this tree here, you can kind of imagine that same vertical growth going this way as I zoom out as this tree which has that long vertical, but now it has all these laterals. Can you see that? That's what this tree will do next year. And again, that tree was grown in 15. So it's in its eighth growing season, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. It's in its eighth growing season. Growing with some competition because I don't spray the base of the tree. So if you spray the base of your trees, if you're in the South, your tree may look like that after three years. But again, I'm working, trying to work as clean as I can with nature. I'm not against spray. I'm just not like fundamentally against it or hardcore against it. It's just, I'm trying not to use it. I want to make this as low input as possible. Because again, I'm not retired. I got babies growing up in high school and middle school and elementary and I have a little bit of a career I'm rolling through but I mean if you look at some of these trees look at this tree this tree's unbelievable and this was grown from seed in my basement and this is a younger tree than the previous but it's just happy where it's at and for whatever reason uh, looks happier I grew those initial few hundred trees at a 30 by 30 and you can see that they're 30 30 30 you can see the 30 foot part and then I decided to get you can get increased production but you may have to get rid of the trees sooner by going 15 foot apart I didn't want to expand the footprint quite as much of the orchard but all of these are 15 foot apart and you can see you know these are all grown from seed by me You know, the interesting thing is, is I've had to come, once I get them above tree, you know, deer browsing height, I, I shut off the food to them. So some of the trees are a little deeper green than others. Some are a little lighter green, but they're gonna have to establish themselves as the dominant food gatherer against all this grass in order to really express their full potential. And as they grow, I think they'll do that. I have considered spraying the base of a few just to have an experiment to show how much more growth they can get. I'm sure it's phenomenal. But again, trying to stay as low input as possible. Now I'll take you through the orchard, show you a couple burrs. We'll wrap up this week's video. This tree looks pretty happy. Let's see if we see any burrs up in there. So I see a burr. Right up in there. If we move up some. We'll see some additional burrs. So this particular tree is not loaded, but has a good number of burrs. We all know my favorite tree, my tree that's been loosed. It's gonna keep that side 
branch trunk for this part of the season and then in the fall it's going to lose that but it's pretty loaded with burrs just now starting to swell up and over the next month or two they'll really swell up and we will see burr uh, it'll be ready to harvest late September Anywhere from mid-September to mid-October. Here's a tree looking up. We're starting to see the trees more and more now that have multiple, multiple burrs. Like the more mature trees would. So whereas I used to be excited for a burr, now we are excited for how many burrs can the tree produce. Let you listen to it. Well, that's going to be the update for this week, the week of July 26, 27, that time frame, 2022. Uh, we're year eight in the orchard. We're going to have pretty decent production. Uh, probably we'll have a few nuts to sell, but we're not going to be like a big commercial sales. There's no way we'll have enough for a U pick uh, for this year. We'll, you know, that's good several years down the road. May have a limited number of nuts that we can sell. Uh, to people that want to grow seeds and we'll try to give you the best parentage we can uh, but it'll just be they'll all be hybrids with really a, a Pandora's box on knowing what you're gonna get you're gonna know it's gonna have some a lot of Chinese and then some mix of American maybe a little Japanese maybe a touch of European but less so of that genetics when you get them just Chinese hybrids is what I would call them Anyway, beautiful day here at the orchard. Hopefully everything's going well in your world. Stay safe out there. Remember, if you're not growing, you're dying.